Sometimes as your backup, sometimes as a mole or a scout, sometimes as your cleanup crew. Fox's tail, making sure the mission succeeded and that you survived. We only have his word to go on, but Skullface's goal was revenge against those who'd use language to subjugate people. Those corrupting a people's identity by forcing a new tongue on them. Those using the power of language to control information. Naturally, that set his sights on Zero. To Zero, English was simply the most convenient code. But to Skullface, English was a parasite. And by eradicating it, he'd stop the world from being eaten away. If that didn't work, he was ready to see the world scorched by nuclear fire. To save language, culture, and race from annihilation, he was willing to overstep the hands of the Doomsday Clock. That is, of course, if you believe anything he had to say. Skullface. Real name unknown. Born in Hungary. While he was... People having strokes behind closed doors. Just like Stalin. No one knew who was behind it. But all you need to do was look for who had the motive. They were all taken out by a man without a face. And now we've got an idea of how he did it too. He got revenge for his people. But he wasn't finished. Skullface defected to the West, eventually ended up with the SAS. That's where he met Zero. It's possible he began planning this whole thing back then. It's hard to say. In any case, Zero made him his XO. He always did have a thing for oddballs. But this one was set to lead a unit no one else would know about. When Zero created Fox, he also formed XOF as a support team. An unconventional special forces unit designed to support Fox, make it stronger with Skullface given the orders. Zero never even told the boss about it. Nor the CIA, naturally. If Fox was Zero's silver bullet, XOF was the recoil when he pulled the trigger. Just like Newton's third law. While you were with Fox, Skullface was operating behind the scenes. Sometimes as your backup, sometimes as a mole or a scout, sometimes as your cleanup crew. Fox's tail, making sure the mission succeeded and that you survived. We only have his word to go on, but Skull... You know, when you brought back all the child soldiers who escaped, Eli knew they'd returned. Needless to say, nobody said a word to him. I guess they got a message to him somehow. Eli wasn't put in the corner in time out. He was locked up in that room, completely cut off from the outside world. Then how do you find out? It's only one possibility I can think of. The Soviet Union has been researching military applications for psi phenomena. Psi? Things like psychokinesis and ESP, extrasensory perception. You mean moving objects without touching them? Knowing what card somebody's holding up? Psychic powers? Come on. I thought that was just another bunch of disinformation aimed at the West. Just bear with me a second. One type of ESP is telepathy. It's the ability to know another person's thoughts through nonverbal means. You're saying Eli read our minds? It's the only idea that doesn't involve someone getting to him. <sighs> Ocelot. Look, Psy research isn't some hocus pocus. It's all evidence-based, scientific... There's gotta be another explanation. Maybe one of the kids stuck a note to your back. I hope that's the case. But I am convinced that they have, or Eli has, a connection to some force we have yet to identify. You better watch yourself, boss. How am I supposed to do that? If he is depending on something for help, well, that's his Achilles heel. If you can figure out what that something is, you might be able to use it against him. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, and the medical team is looking after the kids left on Mother Base. For the moment, they don't seem too panicked. But boss, get this. Eli got those kids to plot their armed uprising as a diversion. Also, he could steal Sahalanthropus and escape. That brat got us good. Set us up and knocked us down. And then there's that mystery kid who was with Eli. If those two working together, 
I'd say things won't be over for a long time yet. Rise and shine, old timer. It is complete. I had our best and brightest working overtime, fine-tuning the greatest burger the world has ever known. I call it the Chemical Burger. What on earth is that color? Now, now, don't judge a burger by its color. Go on, try it. I am not very hungry. What? Oh, I get it. Now, sure, it's loaded with additives, but each one's been approved by the WHO for human consumption. Come on, one little bite's not gonna kill you. Are you sure of that? Hmm. Fine. <laughs> Well, what do you think? It's... 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 It is perfect. Right? Right? This takes me back to the taste of my youth. The neon signs on the mother road. Oh, I can see them now. So? What do you think of our science now? And it doesn't just taste great. You won't believe how cheap it is to make. And because it's pumped up with preservatives, it won't spoil easily in regions lacking refrigerated storage or transportation infrastructure. This bad boy could even solve Africa's hunger problem. Excuse me. People will no longer fight over food or find reason to hate one another. Mankind will come together, reunited between these fluffy buns. Forget Pax Americana. Say hello to Pax Hamburgana. Pax Hamburgana. Skullface thought that destruction was the way to free the peoples of the world from American imperialism. But this is different. Tackling something head-on just makes for more conflict. Only by uniting the world can its various inhabitants truly become free. Having lived as an American parasite as long as I have, I know what I'm talking about. The Chemical Burger is poised to be the greatest liberating force the world has ever known. An ethnic liberator. Burger. Now all I need is a better brand image, starting with a name. I gotta run, old timer. I'll catch you later. Plant expansion complete. Staff assigned. Development project has been added. Please specify a project. Please select a mission. Staff 
assigned.